Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton. In this video, we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. So in this section, we're going to study the inverse function of an exponential function, which are called logarithmic functions. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to convert from logarithmic to exponential form, how to convert from exponential form back to logarithmic form, and how to evaluate logarithmic functions. So let's talk about logarithmic functions. Every exponential function, f of x equals base a raised to the x exponent, where the base must be greater than zero, but the base cannot be equal to one, was a one-to-one -one function if you use the horizontal line test. You can actually verify that it's a one-to-one -one function. Any horizontal line will cross the graph of an exponential function no more than one time. So therefore, exponential functions do have an inverse function. So just to remind yourself what the graph of an exponential growth function looks like, an exponential growth function will have a base that's greater than one, and the base cannot be zero, and so you have a graph that will pass through the y-axis at 0, 1, and it will grow from left to right or increase from left to right if the base is greater than 1. You have no x-intercepts because there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 as x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, the y-values increase without bounds. So the y-values approach infinity. The graph of an exponential function, f of x equals base a raised to the x exponent, where the base is greater than 0 but not equal to 1, it will pass a horizontal line test. So any horizontal line you draw will pass the graph of an exponential function no more than one time. So in other words, an exponential function does have an inverse function. So since the exponential function has an inverse function, we're going to use the inverse function notation, f inverse of x, and this is called the logarithmic function with base a, and is denoted this way. The inverse function of f of x is equal to log base a. So notice that a is a subscript on the logarithm, and x is what's called the argument of the logarithm. It's what's input into the logarithmic function, and you'll output a y value. So the definition of a logarithmic function, let a be a positive number where a cannot be equal to 1. The logarithmic function with base a is denoted this way. Log base a of x is defined as log base a of x is equal to y means base a raised to the y exponent must be equal to x. So on the left-hand side, you have log base a of x equals y. This is a statement involving logarithms, so this is what's called logarithmic form. The base is the subscript on the logarithm, so the base must be positive, but not equal to 1. And it means exactly the same thing with exponents this way. The base is still a for an exponential expression, raised to the y exponents, whatever the logarithm is equal to, that's the exponent for the exponential expression, and it equals x, which was the argument of the logarithm. And so the base must be greater than 0, but not equal to 1 for this exponential expression, and this is what's called exponential form. So in other words, a logarithmic function, y equals log base a of x, it's the exponent to which the base a must be raised to give you x. So whenever we use the definition of logarithms, it's actually convenient to swap back and forth between logarithmic form and exponential form. Sometimes a problem can be more easily solved with exponents, so we'll express it using exponential form. Sometimes we want information about a logarithm function, so we'll actually have it written in logarithmic form instead. So the logarithmic form will be log base a of x equals y, and we want to convert that to exponential form base a to the y exponent equals x. And we'll go back and forth between these two different forms. Just keep in mind that they are equivalent. They mean exactly the same thing. So let's talk about the differences between logarithmic form and its equivalent exponential form. So if you have log base a of x is equal to y, y is the exponent on the exponential expression, the base is still the same, it's still base a with the exponential expression, and x is called the argument, that's what the exponential expression is equal to. So the left side, log base a of x equals y, that's logarithmic form. The same expression using exponents, base a raised to the y exponent is equal to x, that's exponential form. So you have these expressions that you can change from logarithmic form to exponential form or vice versa. Log base 10 of 100,000 is equal to 5 because using exponents, base 10 raised to the fifth exponent, so 10 to the fifth, is equal to 100,000, which was the argument of the logarithm. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3 because the base is 2 on the exponential expression, the exponent is 3, and it must be equal to the argument of the logarithm, which is 8. So 2 cubed is 8 means the exactly the same thing as log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Log base 2 of 1 eighth is equal to negative 3 because we know that if we raise base 2 to a negative exponent, it's actually in the denominator of a fraction. 2 to the negative 3 is really 1 divided by 2 cubed, which gives you 1 eighth. So log base 2 of 1 eighth is negative 3. Negative 3 is the exponent on the base 2 that will give you 1 eighth. And then the last expression, log base 5 of s is equal to r. Keep in mind, if you want to change this to exponential form, the base stays the same, so it's base 5, raised to the exponent r, and it equals s, which is the argument of the logarithm. So in example 1, we're going to change from logarithmic form to exponential form. Convert each expression in exponential form to an equivalent logarithmic form. So number 1, 
4 cubed equals 64. This is definitely an exponential form expression because you are involving an expression with exponents. This says the exactly the same thing as logarithms, log base 4, so keep the base 4 the same with the logarithm function, of 64 is equal to the exponent, which was 3. So the logarithmic form would be log base 4 of 64 is equal to 3. Number 2, 3 to the negative 2 exponent is 1 ninth. That's exponential form to say the exactly the same thing as logarithmic form, log base 3, so keep the base the same. The exponent is negative 2, so that's what the logarithm is equal to. Log base 3 of 1 ninth is equal to negative 2, and that's logarithmic form to say 3 to negative 2 exponent is 1 ninth. Number 3, let's take 1 half cubed is equal to 1 eighth and convert it into logarithmic form. Well, the base is 1 half. The base, as long as it's positive and not equal to 1, you can change it to a logarithmic expression or logarithmic form. So the base is 1 half. It'll be log base a half of 1 eighth is equal to the exponent 3 using logarithmic form. So log base 1 half of 1 eighth is equal to 3. So 1 half to the third power must equal 1 eighth using exponential form. So now that we know how to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form, in example two, we're going to convert from logarithmic form back to exponential form. So convert each expression in logarithmic form to an equivalent exponential form. So number one, log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to three. This is an expression involving logarithms, so this is a logarithmic form. You wanna convert this to exponential form. Well, the base of the logarithm is 10, so the base of the exponential form will be base 10. The exponent is 3 because that's what the logarithm is equal to. So it'd be 10 to the third power is equal to the argument of the logarithm. So 10 cubed is 1,000. And so that's exponential form to state the same thing as log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. Number 2, log base 16 of 4 is 1 half. So this is logarithmic form to say the exactly the same thing with exponents as 16 is the base raised to the 1 half power, which is what the logarithm is equal to, 1 half, and it must equal the logarithm argument, which was 4. So 16 to the 1 half power is equal to 4. That's the exponential form for log base 16 of 4 is equal to 1 half. And then number 3, log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5 because base 2 raised to the fifth exponent, so 2 to the fifth power, is equal to the argument 32. And that is true. 2 to the fifth is equal to 32 in exponential form. That means exactly the same thing. It's log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5. Notice in each of these three, the exponent of the exponential form is the answer of the logarithm. So the first logarithm was equal to three, that's the exponent. The logarithm was equal to half in number two, that's the exponent. And the logarithm was equal to five, that's the exponent for exponential form. So it's really important to remember that the logarithm is just an exponent. In other words, if you have y equals log base a of x, you can actually convert this to an exponential expression pretty easily. You take a, the base, you raise the base to the exponent y, and it must equal the argument of the logarithm. So in other words, a to the y must equal x. Sometimes it's simple to evaluate the logarithm expression by converting to an equivalent exponential form to determine the unknown exponent. Other times, however, we're going to find out that we may need to use a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate logarithms. So example three, evaluating logarithms. Evaluate each of the following logarithmic expressions without using a scientific or graphing calculator. So number one, log base five of 125. In other words, if you take base 5, what is the exponent that you need to raise base 5 to to get 125, which is the argument of the logarithm? Well, it's 3, because 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5. That will give you the argument 125. So log base 5 of 125 is equal to 3. Number 2, log base 7 of 1. So this is base 7 raised to what exponent will give you 1? Well, if you take base 7 and you raise it to the 0 exponent, because anything that's raised to the 0 exponent is equal to 1. And so 7 to the 0 power is equal to 1. That means log base 7 of 1 is equal to 0. Number 3, log base 3 of 1 divided by 243. In other words, what is base 3 raised to what exponent gives you this fraction 1 divided by 243? Well, we know that the exponent will be negative because we know that negative exponents make it a fraction base 3 to a positive exponent that has to be in the denominator of a fraction. So it would be 3 to the negative 4 exponent because 3 to negative 4 is actually in the denominator of 1 divided by 3 to the 4th, and 3 to the 4th is 243. So 1 divided by 3 to the 4th is 1 over 243, which is 3 to negative 4. And so, in other words, log base 3 of this fraction what is base 3 to what exponent gives you this fraction 1 over 243? It has to be negative 4. And then number 4, log base pi of pi. 
In other words, what is base pi raised to what exponent will give you itself pi? Well, pi raised to the first power will give you itself pi. And so log base pi of pi is equal to 1. Since we know that a logarithmic function with base a is the inverse function of an exponential function with base a, we can actually talk about the inverse function f inverse of x in terms of the original function f of x. So if we apply the inverse function, the inverse function of f of x, to the original function f of x using composition of functions, we actually obtain the input value x. So if you remember, if you make the inverse function the outside function, and f, the original function, is the inside function, then you have f inverse of f of x. Well, these two functions are inverse of one another, the inverse of f and f itself. Well, whatever the function f does to x, it will get a y value, but then the y value needs to go into the inverse function, and the inverse function takes the y value back to x. In other words, the inverse function will undo whatever the function f of x does. And the opposite. If you have f on the outside and the inverse function on the inside, so f composed with f inverse, or f of f inverse of x, you will get the input value x back. So let's write this in terms of logarithmic functions and exponential functions now. So if the inverse function is on the outside, that would be log base a. And if f of x is the inside function, and that is the exponential expression base a to the x power, log base a of a to the x power, their inverse is one another, so they're going to undo each other. So you'll get the input value x back. So log base a of a to the x is equal to x, which is the exponent of the exponential expression as part of the argument of the logarithm, and vice versa. Let's say your function f is the outside function, and the inverse function is the inside function. So this time, log base a of x is the exponent on base a exponential expression. So it's base a raised to the exponent log base a of x. Well, base a exponential expression and log base a logarithmic function are inverse of one another, so you'll again just get the input value x back. So the composition of inverse functions undo one another, and so you'll just get a raised to the log base a of x is equal to just x. We actually can list these two important properties involving logarithms and exponential functions and other properties involving logarithms that we have encountered so far in this video. So the theorem, properties of logarithms, suppose that a, the base, is a positive number that is not equal to 1, then we have the following statements. Number 1, log base a of 1 is equal to 0. This will always be true, because if you take base a and you raise it to the 0 power as an exponential expression, you will get 1. So if you take base a, raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. It's always true, as long as the base is positive and not equal to 1. And so how can you say the same thing with logarithms? It'll be log base a of 1 is equal to 0. Okay, number 2. Log base a of a is equal to 1. So this is another logarithmic expression that you can actually write as an equivalent exponential form to understand more easily. So if you have log base a, that is a to what exponent will give you a itself. So a to the first power must be equal to a. And that's true. So if you take a raised to the first power, you will always get itself back. So a to the first power is a means it's exactly the same thing as log base a of a is equal to 1. So if the base is exactly the same thing as the argument of the logarithm, it will be equal to 1. Number 3, log base a of a to the x exponent is actually equal to x. We must raise base a to the power of x to get a to the x. In other words, the logarithmic expression and the exponential expression are inverses one another. So log base a of a to the x will actually give you the input value x back. And number four, just the opposite, base a raised to the log base a of x power is also equal to x. You must take log base a of x as the power to which a is raised to get x. So if you take base a of log base a of x as the exponent, you will get the input value x back. So these last two properties are because composition of inverse functions of one another will undo each other and so we'll just get the x input variable back. So note, these last two properties involving logarithms will actually be very useful when we actually solve exponential equations and logarithmic equations, and also in the applications involving exponential growth and exponential decay that we're gonna see later. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about how to convert from logarithmic to exponential form, and also how to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form, and also how to evaluate logarithmic functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about graphing logarithmic functions.